Okay, this one's about how long the heat pump should operate until it gets into an efficient mode. Unlike a lot of systems, these things take quite a while to get the refrigerant in all the right places and all that sort of stuff so that it actually operates efficiently. So I'm going to do a little time thing on this and we're going to fire this up and I want to give a few things first. We are at about 50 degrees outdoor ambient. Now you can see my gauge set is at uh, equalize. It has not been running. It's shut off. Let's take a look at what the indoor temperatures are. Okay, with the indoor fan operating, we are looking at 69 degrees. And that's a return air temperature. A return air is coming back at 69 degrees. And I'll be giving you a supply temperature as we go along. And we're going to go ahead and fire this up. And I'm going to put a timer on here to see how long it takes to get settled down. Okay, we're going to start this up now. Okay, uh, I'm not going to make you go through all this and wait for it because, because this does take quite a while. But I'm going to show you at different points as we go through here where exactly the temperatures are. Okay, you can see the pressures are going down. I've got superheat and subcool on the uh, gauge there and uh, we're going to be watching for that superheat to go down. Uh, head pressure should go up and one of the most important things is going to be the temperature rise across the indoor coil. Let's take a quick look at that. Okay, you can see we're at about 81 and a half Okay, our return air temp temperature is coming back at 68, and our supply is at 82. Now I'm going to get the temperature difference. Okay, we're running about 16 degrees temperature difference, and uh, we're going to go back and take a look at the gauge set as this starts to settle down. Okay, we're two minutes in. Notice we're running about 47 on the low side and our superheat is pretty high. We're at uh, 28 degrees. Subcool is probably going to stay pretty much the same throughout this whole thing. Head pressure is going up. It's 178 and superheat is going down. Okay, at four minutes in you can see our head pressure slowly climbing. That's the way these things do, is these head pressures slowly go up. Uh, we are at uh, just under 25 and going down on our superheat. Let's take it a, a look at our temperature split across the coil. Okay, right now we're running 19.4, so it's going up. We're getting a, a fairly good uh, temperature rise across that coil. I'll go ahead and switch those two temperature probes so we have a plus on this instead of a minus so nobody gets upset. Okay, six minutes in. Superheat is still in the 20s. Uh, dropping down to 22. Head pressure is going up a little bit. Let's see what's happening to the temperature split across the coil. Okay, looking at this temperature split, we're now at 20 and a half degrees, so I think we're about a degree or so. Not a whole lot, it is kind of settling down. Uh, so let's see, uh, let's give this a few more minutes and we'll see what happens. Okay, we're over 10 minutes into this thing. Our subcooler, our superheat is down to about 17. Head pressure is climbing up towards 200. Still would like a little less uh, superheat. Let's see what our temperature split is. 
Okay, I'm seeing some movement around different ways of this uh, supply. Okay, our supply temperature is 93 degrees. Uh, when all is said and done. Okay, what I wanted to go over with this thing was simply what happens when these things start and how long it takes for them to get up to their high efficiency, their highest efficiency. So it looks like uh, about five minutes in, you're getting probably pretty high efficiency. It's probably not quite up as high as it should be, but that's pretty much it. So you guys that are setting these things for cycling six times an hour, uh, that's not the way they should be. Uh, these things could be cycled at two or maybe three times an hour, and they will work with higher efficiency that way. Remember, this isn't putting out the kind of heat that, say, a gas furnace would put out. The duct temperature is lower, so it's going to take longer to catch up. Anyway, that's what it looks like to me for the time for its efficiency to be up.